Hey, what's going on, guys? <laughs> Listen, really enjoyed the result last night, even though the first half didn't really speak volumes. But I just want to say, thinking about it now, in hindsight, there was reasons to be cheerful. And we have to remember as well, and I talked about this at the end of the podcast last night, that this Arsenal team was in dire straits. It's a work in progress. And we sometimes forget that. We think a couple of good results, couple of good form games and we're back on track. It's just not that easy. And it's been said many times that this is going to be the most competitive Premier League that we've seen in many, many years. So for me, I think we have to realise this is still a team with flaws and it takes a long time to fix those flaws. And when you start to put some cogs in the machine and you start to see the machine working the way you want it to work, those are good signs. There were certain things, Jay Lewis, big shout out to Jay Lewis, 101 Goon Squad. Jay Lewis pointed out that this is Bellerin's third assist this season. And although there's been games that he hasn't played well in, and then we can name the Man City game as one of those, he's come on and he's created a spark. Now, I don't know whether that means he's a player that continues to do that, um, that doesn't follow the flow of the game really well, but he can give you an impact. He can be that impact player, comes on after 65, 70 minutes, and then really changes a game for you. Because he, he's done that a couple of times now, guys. This isn't Last night wasn't the first time he did that. He's done it a few times now. And also notice that when he's done it, he's been in advanced positions. Now, this is something which I have talked about in the last year that his game has really suffered with. He's not really, at times, even crossed the halfway line, enabled to become uh, part of the solution in the final third, creating that one-two ball playing um, using Pepe with the overlap. He hasn't really supported Pepe in that way. And part of Pepe's problem has been because of lack, of lack of support. We know that it's easy for teams to play Arsenal because everything comes through the left. Almost everything comes through the left side. They know about Saka, they know about Tierney, and most importantly, they know who the top leading goal scorer is in Arsenal. And that's Aubameyang. So if you're, you're a defender, if you're a coach or a manager that is game planning to take on Arsenal, well, it's quite simple. What you do is you overload the left-hand side and, and make it harder for Arsenal to penetrate your defence. And that's basically what we've been seeing against Liverpool, City. And again, last night, we were very one-dimensional in our play. And it wasn't until we provided a spark on the right-hand side that you started to see us actually getting somewhere. Now, Bellerin did did really well in, that, in the creation to that. But let's talk about the three players who really, really set their mark on the team last night. The first one we're talking about is Gabriel. Gabriel, at 27 million, I've said on record that he's the best by this summer. Now, I know a lot of people are talking about Thomas Partey and a lot of people, we haven't really seen enough of Partey yet. And uh, we have to look at the, some of the deals that other teams have made. Rodriguez, Everton, which I think is amazing and actually around the same amount of money as well. So you've got to think of Rodriguez as someone who's been in there. But who's having a bigger impact? You know, when we come to think of it, guys, David Luiz, who's only really just got back from slight injury, Rob Holden, who is injured, and Mustafi, who's just come back. So could you imagine if we didn't have Gabriel? Remember, we've got nine, ten centre-backs. Some of them have gone out on loan, but a plethora of them are injured. So could you imagine if we did not buy Gabriel? Where would that have left us? We would have been left with David Luiz as the only real fit centre-back. Think about it, guys. We would have gone into some of those big games, and even now I still don't know why Gabriel didn't play against Liverpool. If you look what, what the guy's been doing, his clearances, the, the, the two big things with me with him, his headed clearances, this guy just repels attacks. Aerial attacks that come into the box, he, he's just a repellent for attacks. And the one-on-one -on -one duels, like teams try and get him on the overlap and he ain't buying it. And if you run directly at him, if you, you know, so you see what Mane, Salah and all them guys do, they run at you. And the fact that we didn't play him against Liverpool was a big drawback for us. But when you see what he does against other players who are running at him, it's the man's just a brick wall. And when you look at that whole Arsenal talking about we haven't got a spine and we had... Coughlin and Mertesacker, a great spine, that calendar year 2015, the best defence in the Premiership we had, 20 goals let in, 
that was six less than Manchester United at the time, which was 26. And we had a solid frame. Everyone was crying out for a spine. And what did we do? Mertesacker went by the wayside and we sold Coughlin off to Valencia and we brought in Mustafi and Xhaka. And since then, the team has not made the top four. And that's a fact. We can talk about it and have our own opinions as much as we like. But the factual number that we're looking at right now is the team hasn't been back in the Champions League since. So the team has found themselves in a position, guys, where we have spent about 75 million and we brought in Thomas Partey and we brought in Gabriel. And the spine of the team looks as solid as I've ever seen it look in the last five years since that Coughlin Mertesacker era. You've got Gabriel, who's just a beast. He's just a man child at the back there. He's only 22 years old. And we've got Thomas Partey. Let's move on to Thomas Partey. Partey is the ultimate controller, he's the collaborator. He is, as I used to call Alex Song, Partey is the caretaker. He takes care of everything. There was a, nothing this man can do. Yesterday, he was dribbling, running at defenders. He's got the ability to do that. His positional play was fantastic. Holding up the ball and shielding possession to help keep possession is something we've never really had. We've never had a guy who can hold onto the ball. When he's being charged at by opposing players, a guy who can just turn his back, move his arm out, turn his back and keep possession of the football he was doing that not once not twice not three times but he was doing that for the whole game and there's a play on the stream last night that I kept talking about and that was when Karras hit a 40 yard pass over to Flauntus and if you look at the replay Flauntus was he was open five yards he had five yards of space he just took the first touch onto the ball in the penalty area and Thomas Partey, not a centre-back, forget the centre-backs, Partey is a, a holding midfielder. He comes out of nowhere like a, a, a free safety in the NFL. I compared him to Ronnie Lott, Steve Atwater. He comes out of nowhere and just toe-pokes the ball with his right foot away from Fontes, taking away a one-on-one -on -one scoring opportunity. Now, that was a route one pass, which kind of caught the centre-backs out by surprise. But Partey was in the right place at the right time because of his awareness. And this is the thing we talk about in terms of defensive midfielders and holding midfielders. Your range and your vision, the aptitude to understand how breaking attacks off. Uh, Torreira was very good at this. He was very good at spotting out attacks. Um, unfortunately, the two holding midfielders that we have don't really have that vision to stomp out counter attacks or surprise attacks. And what we're seeing with Thomas Partey is he has that in his back pocket. And it was a blessing to see him do that. It's one play, guys. And that one play tells you everything you need to know about the guy and his awareness and his positioning. And that addition to the team is going to speak volumes in our success this season. The third guy I want to talk about is, is continuing to be an unsung hero in the Arsenal football team. And that is Mohamed El Nene. Last night, El Nene, again, just like Thomas Partey, when balls were coming out wide onto the left flank, he was intercepting those as well. He was plugging in the gaps, standing in between opposing passers, the recipients of the ball, and stopping that ball from being played, meaning the ball had to go back. That happened a lot because of El Nene's positioning. And one thing I want to talk about as well is his forward play. Now, we know he's he's got great poise, he's calm on the ball, he's very accurate with his passes, he's averaging 94% passing this season. That is humongous, guys. This guy doesn't give possession away. He doesn't give the ball away. And that's always been a big weakness of Granite Xhaka over the years. And what we've seen from him, he's starting to grow into the role. He's another one, guys. Five games now from El Nene, and he hasn't played a bad game. Uh, the lowest I believe I've rated him is 6.5. This guy is giving you a level of consistency we haven't seen in the midfield for a very long time. Now, the play I want to talk about is the one that sets up the winning goal. This guy, El Nene, gets into an advanced position, first of all, an advanced position. And then he feeds Bellerin. Bellerin makes the run right behind the, the, the left back and the centre back. And he gives you a through ball that completely splits the defence. 
and caught everybody napping off guard. And it's a type of play that you see Bayern Munich do, Barcelona. It's a type of play that Pep Guardiola tries to coach his side players, Sterling, Merez, etc. And, you know, to always hit that ball through the scene to catch the defence off, especially if they're stepping up to try and catch you off guard. Um, and it completely obliterated Rapid Vienna's defence last night. And then, obviously, it led to the goal. Now, on second view, I thought originally that Aubameyang's goal was offside. It wasn't. If you look at it, he's actually timing the run to perfection. Um, so it wouldn't have been disallowed. I know I said it yesterday, but I, I take it back now. I think it was just a great team goal. And it's a team goal we haven't seen happening for a long time because that kind of creativity has been missing. You've been looking for Willian, been looking for Pepe to, to hit those balls through the seam on the back line. And it hasn't really been happening. And you get this guy, El Nene, who comes up and he makes that happen for you. You get Thomas Partey. Partey put in two balls yesterday that also split the defence on the other side. But I think why we're focusing on El Nene is because that right-hand creativity has been missing for a while. And Pepe's not really solved it. William's not really solved it. And El Nene has come up from the defensive position to put that ball through. And this is some of the consistency that we need to be seeing. And those are the three players I really want to focus on, guys, because it looks like now Arsenal has a spine. So all you really have to do is kind of convert yourself now to fix what happens what's your best free combination and your final free players because you're going to need some consistency and I know guys it's still early days and we have to give Pepe and Willian uh, time to work with Aubameyang if they're going to keep Aubameyang in the middle I think it's a good idea but you have to work out who's going on on the flanks and I'd like to see Pepe on the left Willian on the right and if that doesn't continue to happen, then you have to keep starting Saka. You have to keep doing that. Also, one has to mention Maitland-Niles. Maitland-Niles hasn't played for a few games now. And also Reese Nelson and Smith Rowe, two players who were sitting on the sidelines waiting for their chance. So you cannot continue to carry Pepe and carry Willian in every game that you play. At some point, you've got to put somebody in there that's going to kick these guys up the backside. It happened last season. Last season, Eddie Nketiah came in, gave Lacazette a scare. He, Ed Nketiah was fantastic and only lost that spot because he was red carded and had to miss a few games. And that's what allowed Lacazette to come back into the team and prove his worth. Had it not been for that, Nketiah would have seen last season out because he gives you so much on the back end. He gives you great defensive prowess and pressure and his movement and running into the box is exceptional. And it's a shame we didn't see Nketiah play that anchor number nine role. They put him out left and he looked a little bit lost, if I'm honest. I think that's the trick moving forward now is to try and figure out that front three. And I wouldn't sit on what's been not making it happen over the last few games. I would just try various different combinations. And look, Reese Nelson didn't get on the field last night. Does that mean that you start him against Leicester? I definitely would. I would put him in there because you've got to a point where you've had Willian and Pepe on that right-hand side and you've kind of not really had a reaction. You've had a few games where you, you've done really well. Uh, Liverpool game when Pepe came off the bench and scored the, the, the goal there and the assist last night for David Luiz. David Luiz was fantastic last night. Could have scored in the first half. It pulled off a great save from the goalkeeper and then eventually had a headed goal anyway. So, I mean, Luiz could have had two goals easily last night. He was very stout in the face of attack. But guys, I just want to leave it there. Remember, Premiership show tonight. So please join us and uh, let's have a look at the games that was happening last week. And let me know your thoughts as well. Right back at you guys. And I'm out of here.